Awesome. Hey guys, um, we are going to be in Matthew. You see it up on the board there, Matthew 28. If you, if you want a paper Bible, the, some are going to be around. Just catch their attention. Derek's over here and Armando is over on this side. Um, so just turn to that and you'll be there ahead of us. Um, before we get into the word, we are going to have Jeannie come up and share her story. So let's welcome Jeannie. I know she's not nervous at all, so just, you know... Don't look at her, and she'll be fine, okay? Let's go like this. Okay, now it's on. Now try. Hello? Okay. I'm Jeannie Dubray. Um, they asked me to share my story today, and I actually said no at first. Um, <laughs> But I've decided that if I could even reach one person out of everybody here, it would be worth it. I'm, a nerv I'm nervous about it, and I'm not very good at it, but I'd like to share my story. Um, March 22nd, 2017, my life changed completely. Um, I was at work, normal day at work. Um, I got a phone call about the mammogram I had had the day before. Um, it wasn't positive, but they said it was, it was very suspicious, more than just like a second recheck or you know, normal kind of thing. And I knew in my heart that it was something bad because my mother had died of breast cancer, and I just knew. So I decided to call my husband. My husband had been laid off from work for five and a half months out of the six months you're allowed unemployment. So, and a job came up the Wednesday before this. So he hadn't even been there a week or just about a week. And we were so happy he got this job. It was like a blessing. We were so happy. Well, anyway, I called my husband at work, and I said, I'm really upset. You know, I think it's really going to be something bad. And he's like, don't worry, honey. Everything's going to be all right. But I'm busy, and, I, you know, they're watching me, and I have to get back to work. So I hung up, and I called a friend of mine. And a little while later, the phone rings, and it was Hartford Hospital social worker telling me that there had been a terrible accident and that to get to the hospital they wouldn't tell me anything about it so as I friend drove me to the hospital thank God but um, as I'm going I'm looking at my phone because of course everything's online now and it was on the highway so everybody knew it and I could see all these reports coming up but it didn't say really what happened it just said serious injuries so I'm you know Hartford's a long way from where I was in New Milford and uh, it seemed like a forever trip. So I finally got there, and they, I ended up finding out that he didn't make it, he died. Um, I was completely devastated. We were together since I was 16 and he was 19. We didn't have kids, you know, so really it was the two of us. We didn't even have a lot, do much social. We called ourselves hermits because we did everything together. And uh, I really, I was like, how could God do this to us? You know, why would he do this? We've always tried to be good people. We love God, you know. Why, how could this possibly happen? I was just totally, my faith crashed, really. I still loved God, but I would just didn't understand how this could happen. Uh, about five days later, I tried to kill myself. Um, my sister couldn't reach me. It was getting to be late, I guess, and she couldn't reach me, and she decided to call my other sister-in-law who lived closer, and uh, they, she came out, and they found me within, they said, like, another four minutes, and I would have been gone. Um, I wasn't too happy about it. I don't remember that part of it too much, but I do remember when I got to the hospital being, like, wheeled down the hallway on the stretcher, all I remember is waking up for a while and just saying, don't save me, please don't save me. I don't want to be saved. Um, and that's all I remember for a while. I was in ICU for three days and then behavioral health for a week. And I got home and I really, I just didn't even know, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was just a basket case. There were, I, couldn't, I couldn't even pray. I couldn't talk to God. I couldn't pray. I used to pray all the time just in my daily life. I couldn't pray. Um, and now my friend Susan Stoughton, who I had worked with for like 16 or 17 years at the same school, we worked in the same school in New Milford School District. Um, she asked me to go to, oh, after I got out of the hospital, that Friday was Good Friday. And she asked me, would I go to church with her on Good Friday? Well, it turned out I had to get biopsies from that breast thing that was being, that I, 
they had called about. And I really used that as a good excuse because I really just did not want to go to church. I didn't really want to go anywhere. She asked me for Easter Sunday, and I still didn't go. Um, I just couldn't see facing God and the music, and the, I just couldn't do it. So the following Sunday, she asked me again. And this time, I said I would go. I wasn't in very good shape, but I went. And uh, I have to thank Susan and Michael, but Susan, she grabbed my hand, and she never let go during the times, all these times. I was in really bad shape. My faith was not good. She kept helping me. And she got me to go to church that day. The thing she didn't know was that was the first day they ever had indoor baptisms at the other church. Um, she didn't know that. And she says to me, oh, no, you know, I hope that doesn't put you off, you know, because they're having baptisms. I didn't realize it was today. And I'm like, I don't care. I got baptized when I was a baby. You know, I don't need another baptism. I don't really care, you know. And uh, so I sat there, and I was crying through the service, you know, the music in the service. And when the people started coming up to be baptized, it was, I think, 15 or 20, and they were in shorts and stuff, and they came up to be baptized. And I started feeling this, like, weird, even though I was crying and not, you know, hardly paying attention, really, I started feel, was staring at them, and I started feeling this nudge that I should go. <laughs> uh, I don't know where, it, you know, I didn't know where it came from, but I just started feeling it. But my feet weren't moving. I wasn't moving. Um... They did the 15, 20 people, and they started another song. And then Pastor John says, you know, there's still more water if anybody wants to go up, and they can still go up and get baptized. And, and so then they started. I didn't go again. My feet were, you know, that stuck to the floor kind of feet. And uh, I didn't go. So they started to sing again. And one more time he asked. And he's like, you don't have to be dressed. You know, you can just go. And... Uh, I looked at Susan. I couldn't even talk, and I, I was like, I don't even know how this happened. It was just God. I looked at Susan, and she looked at me, and she says, did you want to go? And I just kind of nodded because I couldn't say anything, and she held my hand, and we went up to the tub together, and I just went in with all my clothes. They had to tell me to take my shoes off because I was going to go in my shoes, too. <laughs> and... Uh, I was crying the whole time, but when I went in that water, under that water, I felt something change. It's not that it made losing my husband any easier, but I felt something change in me. Um, I could feel like a release, and also I have a hope now at least that, you know, I have a hope from God and from Jesus that I will see him again, you know. So that gets me through. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is when I was going up for the baptism, I heard Pastor John, well, I didn't know at all. I'd never met him before this or anything. I heard him say, you're the one we've been waiting for. And it registered, but I was busy going up in front of everybody getting baptized, and I didn't really think of it. So that time, when, you know, we got done with the baptism and all. And that Friday, he came with Susan to pray for me for my breast surgery I was going to be having. And when he came in, I said, I said, why did you say that about you're the one I've been waiting for? And he said, he said, God kept telling him that he didn't usually keep asking like that, but God had told him somebody really needed to be baptized. And that's why he kept asking. And that's why when I got up, he said, you're the one I've been waiting for, because he just knew somebody was there that needed it. And I really believe that. God does speak in this church. God speaks to Pastor John. And to all of us here, I really think <laughs> I think that we're like the pebbles in the pond where the, the ripples go out and they touch more people and those people, they more ripples go out. You know, our faith goes from one person to the next. And that's really what we're supposed to do is help spread it. Susan spread it to me and I'm hoping to spread it to a lot more people. But. <laughs>